All right, so I got a phone call and the video stopped recording, but you know what? That's okay, let me tell you what I did during that time. All right, I cooked down my onions, so let me show you what they look like now. So they're a little bit translucent translucent, and a little brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer them into a small bowl um, because my fiance does not like onions. So if you're an onion hater or you have an allergy or anything, you either can skip this step completely or you can just put it on half, which I'll show you later. All right. So in that same pan, I'm going to get that back heating up. I'm going to put a little bit more of my extra virgin olive oil and I'm going to cook up those pieces of chicken that we cut up before. So I took those pieces of chicken and I diced them into smaller little pieces. So it looks like this now. And I'm going to add them onto the pan and we are going to cook those all the way through. While our chicken cooks up, we can actually do our next step. Let me grab our next ingredient. <laughs> I need a step ladder to get to it. Okay. All right, so the next thing that we are going to need is cream of chicken soup. So this is a great base. That way you don't actually have to make like a roux and put it all together. This is just a quick thing that my mom taught me before I went to college so that I had some quick easy meals that I could make in our uh, suite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, add both of these into a pan. So I have a nine by 11 pan here. <laughs> and I am going to add two cans of cream of chicken to that pan while my chicken is cooking. I do just wanna make sure that I am stirring my chicken along the way. Um, one thing that I did forget to mention, because um, the video stopped recording, was make sure after you handle chicken, like any raw meat, that you wash your hands before you handle anything else. You don't want any of that bacteria that was on the raw meat to be uh, transferred to anything else that you're using or you are cooking. All right, let me get that in the pan. And that's one, and I'm going to add my second. Two. Now I'm pretty sure that they make a reduced sodium one as well. If you would like to use the reduced sodium one, you can. Um, some people also prefer to do one can of cream of chicken and one can of cream of mushroom. I like the cream of chicken better personally, but that is up to you. Okay, the next ingredient that you're going to need is a bag of frozen mixed veggies. Okay, so you can do the frozen kind, or you can do the canned version, or you can do fresh if you'd like. Um, the one that I like, I think this is always just quick. I always keep it in my freezer, so it's just a quick go-to meal. Um, this one has, it has corn, carrots, cut green beans, and peas. So this is what I am going to add into that pan that I just put the cream of chicken in. So let's open this up and we'll add that right in. Now make sure that you're still stirring your chicken along the way. Okay. So I'm going to stir up the cream of chicken and those veggies together, get those all mixed in. Okay, so right now, this is what my pan looks like. Okay, and let me show you what my chicken looks like. I'm sorry, I don't have a great angle for this in my kitchen but right now this is what my pan looks like with my chicken so it is not quite done yet so we got to keep going on that 
All right, so now that our veggies are mixed in over there and our chicken is cooking, we're gonna add some seasonings to our chicken. Um, so I have been obsessed with this new salt. So it is called Lowry Season Salt. I really like that. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of that in. Okay. Then I'm just gonna do just a tad of regular salt, not too much, because I just put a lot of that. Some pepper. Okay. I'm gonna put some onion powder in. And some garlic powder. Okay. Make sure I stir all of that up. Get it nice and incorporated. I just discovered that Lari seasoned salt. So there's one cookbook that I really like that I have I can show you. So um, I, I'm assuming you all know Chrissy Teigen. So I have Chrissy Teigen's cookbook and I really like it. And she mentions the Lari salt in a lot of her different recipes. So um, I had to try it and uh, it's a game changer, it's really good. All right, so keep moving that chicken around. Now, mind you, your chicken is going to be in the oven, so this pot pie will be in the oven for about 30, 35 minutes until it's bubbly, but you do wanna make sure that your chicken is fully cooked right now because you're really just warming up the rest of your pie and getting all the ingredients to temperature. So it's going to be cooking it, but you still wanna make sure that your chicken is fully cooked before you add it to the rest of your pie. Mm, smells so good. All right, while that's cooking, I am just gonna fill up one of the cream of chicken cans with water. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to add it to that pot, um, to the container, container, the pan that has the cream of chicken and the veggies in it. I don't want it to be too watery, so what I want to do is slowly add this in. I'm not going to add it all straight in at once because remember, you can always add more, but you can't take away. So let me fill this up. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of water To that and get that mixed up in there. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Okay, so now it's just made it a little bit less thick. So my chicken was frozen before this, so I do have a little bit of water in the pan right now. So that's gonna be okay, but I do wanna make sure that I don't add too much water into my mixture so it gets too soupy. Okay, so let me show you what the chicken looks like now. Okay, so it is starting to brown up now. A good way to check if your chicken is fully cooked is to cut a few of these little pieces open to see if there's any pink in the middle. And I have a little bit of pink left in mine, so I'm gonna keep cooking it for another few minutes. If you can't cut through with just your like mixing spoon, that probably is telling you it's not fully done. Um, but that's how I double check. So I've got probably another minute of cooking to do before I add this to the rest of my pot pie. So how would do it? Now 
No, I like to jam out, listen to some music while I cook usually, maybe watch a TV show, something. Just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> you wanna make sure that you're attentive while you're cooking. Alright, so my chicken is just about done, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the pot pie. I wish I could just like angle this differently, but it's not really letting me. Okay, so I'm going to add that and I'll show you exactly how I do it. So I'm going to lift up the pot, pan can be a little bit heavy, I'm going to lift that up and I'm going to shake the chicken out into the Pyrex that has my rest of my ingredients in it. Okay, I'll give you a show. Okay, so right now it looks like this. I'm going to mix up that chicken in there, incorporate it throughout the whole thing. So I use about two chicken breasts. Um, if they're bigger, if they are smaller chicken breasts, I do like to... Um, just use maybe three just to get a good amount of chicken in this because it does feed a lot of people. Okay, perfect. So now that it's all mixed together, this is what it looks like. Delicious. So I really like onions. So for all you onion people out there, I'm gonna incorporate my onions on half of this. So I'm just gonna pour those in and then I will just mix it in on just half of it. Um, I'm an onion lover, so I think it adds really great flavor to the dish. So I'm gonna put that in, mix those onions in so they're well incorporated. You don't wanna really just leave them at the top, you wanna make sure you combine it all the way through so you get that flavor from them. All right. So once those are incorporated, what you are going to do is you are gonna take a piece of saran, not saran wrap, sorry, aluminum foil, and you're going to cover your dish. Put it in the oven at 375 for 30 to 35 minutes until the sides are bubbly. So what I like to do on top, let me tell you, after the 30, 35 minutes, what I do is I take it out, I make sure it's nice and bubbly, and then I get myself some crescent rolls. Okay, I take the crescent roll, I roll it out on top, and then I'll bake it again for about 10 to 12 minutes or until the crescent roll is nice and golden brown. So I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out because I just had another one in there cooking and it comes out looking like this. So the bottom part is nice and bubbly and warm all the way through and the top crescent roll is nice and flaky. So I either like to top it with crescent roll or another one of my favorites to add on the top that my mom used to make for us is sometimes we put the French's um, onion crisps on the top. I really like that as an alternative to the um, crescent roll. So it depends what you like on the top, but I hope you enjoy this recipe. It's really quick to put together and then, you know, you come out with a good family meal. So I hope you enjoy and let me know if you have any questions and I will put the recipe somewhere right here. Peace out. <laughs> Bye.